Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today. It's time for another Japanese wrestling figure review. And today, we've got ourselves a two-pack to take a look at. This pack here is Masakatsu Funaki vs. Minoru Suzuki, and it's the Masakatsu Funaki Memorial Bout. This two-pack here represents the match that these two guys had in Pancrase, although there's a few things that don't exactly jive with what actually happened on that night. So this two-pack comes with a figure of Funaki, and it comes with a figure of Suzuki, both of which had previously had releases, but what's really cool about this toy is that it comes with the Pancrase Championship belt. So let's talk about the packaging really quickly here. You guys can see it's pretty big, pretty wide packaging actually, and it's really nicely done. It's got a really nice photo of the front medallion of the Pancrase Championship belt, which is one of my favorite championships of all time. I love the Pancrase logo, which is in it, and you can also see the Pancrase logo on the top right of this packaging here. We've got both fighters' names in very simple italicized font. That's very cool. The back of the packaging, once again, has both of these fighters' names, has the Pancrase logo. It's also got a photo of both of them shaking each other's hands. And there's also a ton of Japanese text. I'm, I'm assuming that those are both bios about each fighter. They are very long, very dense biographies. Now you guys might notice that this Pancrase Championship belt here is a little misplaced. Well, that's because of how I got it, actually. It just kind of fell out of its holder inside the plastic. Uh, it took me a while to actually wiggle it back into that position to show you guys. So hopefully if you get this one for yourself, it'll be a little bit less wiggly and hopefully still in the spot it should be. But for the sake of this review, it doesn't really matter because we're taking this out of the box. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit of the history between Funaki and Suzuki. Because these guys have quite a storied past together. In fact, their story begins in 1986, when Funaki and Suzuki were both trained by Yoshiaki Fujiwara when they were rookies in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You can actually find some great footage of them from a little documentary about Carl Gotch that shows them training with that legendary catch wrestler in front of his garage. Now that same graduating class that Fujiwara taught in 86 also had Keiji Muto, Shinya Hashimoto, Jushin Thunder Liger, Chris Benoit, and Masahiro Chono, just to name drop a few of the notables. Fujiwara eventually left New Japan in 1989 to join the UWF, and he brought Suzuki and Funaki along with him. However, that company collapsed by the end of 1990, leading to the birth of pro wrestling Fujiwara Gumi, a pro wrestling league that focused on more traditional grappling. Suzuki and Funaki grew disillusioned by this company and, along with a few other wrestlers, left the company to form Pancrase in 1993. The history of Pancrase is a video for another day entirely, but the main point you need to know about Pancrase is that it was a shoot-style company and the fights were real. At least 99.8% of them, according to some fighters who competed there. It basically predates the UFC by a few months, in fact. And of course, we all know that Ken Shamrock fought there, Frank Shamrock fought there, Boss Rutten, Maurice Smith, Josh Barnett, Semi Schilt, many notables who went on to compete in the UFC got their start there. These two wrestlers have fought side by side as well as against each other in pro wrestling. And here's a few of those highlights. From what I could find, they had their first match together in April 1990 in the UWF, which Funaki won by leg lock. They also had a cage match in 2010 in All Japan Pro Wrestling, which Funaki won, but Suzuki avenged that a month later in a traditional match. But as for this particular two-pack we're looking at today, this represents their Pancrase match in October 1994, which was an extremely short bout that saw Funaki win by choking Suzuki out cold to the sleeper. And that brings us back to the packaging, because the one big difference about that match versus what this toy is showing here is that it was not a championship match. So there was no belt on the line, neither man was even the champion at that point when this match happened. But they were both Pancrase championship holders. So let's go ahead and get Suzuki and Funaki out of the box and take a look at those figures loose. And yes, folks, this is definitely going to hurt because this packaging on here is beautiful. Uh, I would have kept this thing mint on card as well, but, you know, I just really want that Pancrase belt. Luckily, this thing is old enough that I could take it out, and most of this packaging is still intact because, yeah, I want to keep this. I'm definitely keeping this back in. All right, and here's our Suzuki and Funaki 2-pack out of the box. And so the thing you really need to know about this 2-pack here is that these are essentially just repaints of previously released figures. Now, I don't actually have a Suzuki, but what I do have over here is a Funaki. This is the Masakatsu Funaki we reviewed in our Funaki review not that long ago. And you can see it is practically identical in terms of sculpt and the mold that they used. They just basically did reuse that mold, in fact. The main differences here are the colors. You can see that his flesh color is actually a little bit different here. It's a little bit less orange from the green Masakatsu Funaki figure. His hair is slightly darker. It's a slightly darker shade of gray. But other than that, the figure is identical. Nothing is different about it. And same goes for that Suzuki figure as well. This Suzuki figure was reused uh, at least one or two other times. There's a version of him with blonde hair that was recycled for it as well. So nothing is that different from these figures. Since we already looked at a Funaki, I'm not going to go into too much detail about him. 
you know, I've already talked in great depth about the face sculpt, the body, and all that stuff. If you want to see that, you can check out our review of the green Funaki. But this is our first time looking at a Suzuki figure, and this is actually my very first Minoru Suzuki figure. So I gotta talk about that sculpt, because that face is, again, it's one of those interesting Kara Pro faces, in that it resembles him, but it doesn't really look that much like him one-to-one. -one. But I can look at it and say close enough that, you know, I know that's Suzuki. What is interesting to me is the hand pose that he's got here. And, like, I guess it's meant to be kind of like this, perhaps? I mean, the way it's sculpted, usually it tells you, like, how the arms are meant to be. And it looks like his arms are really more so meant to be down at this point here. And I say that because you can see where the shoulder joints kind of match up there in the mold. But, you know, as far as, like, a pose and a body, it's kind of weird to me. You know, I don't, I don't really think this is Suzuki's body as much to me. And maybe it's more so just the way the hands are as well, because the hands, I don't really know what they're doing. Like, I get that they're supposed to be in the Pancrae's hand. He had open hands to slap people and to grapple people. But when I think about Suzuki's stance, you know, I don't really think that. He was much lighter on his feet, and this figure feels very heavy. And Funaki's pose is also just way more expressive than Suzuki's. Suzuki's is very kind of bland. But it could be referencing the way that Suzuki fought, which is more of like a stalking style, as opposed to being more of like this underdog stance that Funaki has here. They are both wearing black, which is in fact accurate to the match that they had in 1994. The only difference between their outfits was the fact that Funaki has the Japanese flag on his trunks, and the fact that Funaki has his name down across his kick pads, whereas Suzuki does not here. So really, the figures are fine. This isn't my favorite version of Suzuki, and hopefully I'll get some more Suzukis to talk about those in another day. As for Funaki, you know, this is probably the better Funaki in my opinion. As far as Funakis go, this is fine. It gets the job done. Really, the main reason to get this piece here is to get the Pancrase Championship belt. So I mentioned this is one of my favorite belts of all times in Japanese MMA, Japanese pro wrestling, and this is a very, very nice version of this too. It's got this really great, I guess that's an ink wash. I'm not sure which is which, to be honest. Like, it appears there's an ink wash inside that belt to kind of give it more depth in those medallions. And I feel like the other version I have of this belt from a different toy didn't have that. But yeah, I think this looks really, really good. I love this belt. And the belt, in theory, should go on someone's waist fairly easily because it's just got three little holes here, which we can get around someone's waist. Let's go ahead and put it around Suzuki's waist and see if that works. All right, so it's not really fitting that well on Suzuki. Let's see if we can get it to stay on Funaki. And unfortunately, this particular version of the belt doesn't want to stay on either guy. You can kind of see how it looks here, how it's supposed to look, but the clasp on the back does not want to stay in. It's really very resistant to the space the figures have. I'm going to just try and do it in, over here to show you guys how it is not on a figure. Uh, it's, you can kind of see it's barely holding on right now, and it won't take much for it to just fall back out. So I'm going to assume that's just the fact that this plastic is very, very resistant. But yeah, you guys can see what I mean. It's not even closing all the way when it's not on another figure. And that's just on the first clasp. I think the second's going to be even worse. Yeah, it's not staying in place, so that's unfortunate. Maybe with some more wiggling, it might do the job. But for what we're looking at today, it's not really working out, unfortunately, so I can't put it on anybody. So as for articulation, both these figures have the typical Kara Pro articulation, which is, you know, practically nothing. Shoulders go up and down, and the waist turns, and that's, that's it. We're done here. <laughs> that's all the articulation. You guys know the deal with these figures at this point, but it's not about the articulation. It's about the bodies, it's about the head sculpt. And once again, you know, these figures, they're not the greatest of all time in terms of the sculpts. If you want better sculpts, you can get those How figures, which there is one of Suzuki, I believe. There's none of Funaki, as far as I can remember. But for the scale, for the, what they are, for the time that they came out, I think they're strong enough that they're worth picking up if you're a fan of these guys. And in particular, I recommend this two-pack because you get both guys for not that much money. The Funaki figure isn't usually that expensive anyway. Suzuki can go up in price, but this version of Suzuki is not one of the more expensive ones to get. But this is, I think, the better version of him to get if you want this particular style of Suzuki because it comes with that Pancrae's Championship belt. And it's that belt that makes this two-pack much more sought after. If you're curious about who came with that Pancrae's Championship belt, I can tell you that, as far as I can remember, the only toy to have it besides this two-pack is a Yuki Kondo figure. It's not one of my favorite Kara Pro figures either, just because it's basically him in a pose of punching because it's him in a punching pose. And yeah, since these things have so much limited articulation to begin with, it doesn't do much except stand there and punch. So it's a little awkward looking. It kind of stands up a little funny also, but it's got the belt and that's what matters. But I've, I'm pretty positive this version of the belt is better than the one I've got. So yeah, this is definitely a two pack to get. Now we already talked about Masakatsu Funaki variants in our video all about him. So once again, if you want to learn more about the other versions of Funaki out there, check out that video. But for Suzuki variants, he had a lot of Kara Pro figures, and I think it might actually be more than Funaki, who has had a bunch. So besides what we're seeing here today in this two-pack, Suzuki had two versions of himself doing his entrance in Pancrase with a towel on his head. One is in the black outfit, and one is in the white outfit. 
He's also in a two-pack with Naomichi Marafuji from when they were the GHC Tag Team Champions, and both of those come with the belts. I really like that version of Suzuki in particular. And once again, there are two versions of that two-pack. One has Suzuki in white, and the other has Suzuki in black. Now, this particular version of Funaki we're looking at here was eventually repackaged with blonde hair, and that came in a two-pack with Jushin Thunder Liger. And there's also a few different figures of Funaki in mini big head form, both when he had hair like this and later when he changed his hair into that much more signature look that we know these days. Now that version of Yuki Kondo also had a variant. There's a blue version and a green version of those figures. So that means there's essentially three chances to get this particular championship belt. So if you guys know of any other variants that I've missed about Suzuki, let me know in the comments below. I want to make sure these videos are as complete of a history as possible, and I can't do that without you guys' help. So that's our look at Masakatsu Funaki and Minoru Suzuki from the Kara Pro Masakatsu Funaki Memorial Bout 2-Pack. You know, this 2-Pack is not one that you see very often, but it's also not one that's typically that expensive to get. If you're a mint on card collector, I think it's a real standout, beautiful looking piece. If you're a loose collector like I am, I think it's also pretty great. And again, it's got the Pancrase Championship belt. And hopefully your version of the belt will actually go on the waist better because I can tell you for a fact that my version of the belt that I had previously from that Yuki Kondo figure does fit around his waist. It fit around my Josh Barnett's waist. That one moves. This one here is a little bit more resistant, and that might just be the fact that over time, maybe I need to kind of bend it a little bit more and it'll loosen up the, the rubber here. But, you know, as of this moment right now, mm, yeah, it still isn't fitting on that, not that much better. So maybe play with it, maybe not, or just leave it there because it looks pretty great too, just between the two of them. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something today and I hope this is entertaining to you. If you want to learn more about these Kara Pro figures, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you want to watch more of our videos about Kara Pro wrestling figures, as well as our WWE wrestling figures, New Japan wrestling figures, AEW figures, and everything else we do here in Nerd News today, please make sure to subscribe and give this video a like too while you're at it, please. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today and keep that fighting spirit burning.